Welcome dear student to English class. Today I am going to teach you the poem Wind which is written by Subramanya Bharati. Now let's have a look about the poet Chinna Swami Subramanya Bharati also known as Bharatiyar was a Tamil writer, poet, journalist, Indian independence activist, a social reformer and a polyglot. Popularly known as Mahakavi Bharati, he was a pioneer of modern Tamil poetry and is considered one of the greatest Tamil literary figures of all time. People consider him as father of modern Tamil literature. Theme of the poem As the name suggests, this poem is about wind. However, the wind is a natural phenomenon and in the poem, the poet describes the power of the wind and calls wind destructive. Further, he links the destructive power of the wind with the difficulties of life. He says that weak people break down easily but stronger people emerge out stronger. Also, the poem gives a very important lesson that we should be mentally tough and physically strong in order to survive the hardships of life. However, a weak person crumbles and breaks down like an old building. So it is necessary that we should make these destructive forces our friends with our determination and strength. Now let's start with the poem. Just see first four lines. Wind, come softly. Don't break the shutters of the windows. Don't scatter the papers. Don't throw down the books on the shelf. So whenever we see the word wind, the first thing that comes to our mind is destruction everywhere. So in this particular line, lines, the poet is requesting the wind. The poet directly talks to the wind. In fact, he makes an entreaty to the wind. That means he is requesting the wind. He asks the wind not to break down the shutters of the window. The shutters are the only thing that separate man from the stormy environment outside. So in a way, the poet is asking the wind for protection. He also asks the wind not to scatter the papers in his room or to throw down the books from his bookshelves. Since he is a poet, so it is very obvious that he must have be having lots of books in his home or he must be writing on the papers which he is asking that don't shatter those papers. Maybe he is writing some poem or something else. He also asked the wind not to scatter the papers in his room or to throw down the books from his bookshelves. It is pertinent to, for him to care about papers and books and for them to be the first things in his room that he doesn't want disorganized because he is a writer. Perhaps some of these papers also contain drafts of poems like this one. Hence they are very important to him and he cannot afford to lose them. So he asks, so he's asking the wind to blow gently, not to blow so strongly that it's shattering the windows or scattering the papers. Now see next three lines of the poem that is lines 5, 6 and 7. There, look what you did. You threw them all down. You tore the pages of the books. You brought rain again. Now in these lines the poet is really angry with the wind for what, she, what he has done. In these lines, the poet continues speaking to the wind. However, the tone he now uses to address the wind has changed from the tone he had been using in the first four lines of the poem. In first four lines of the poem, he, ha he was requesting the wind. Now in these three lines, he is annoyed with the wind, angry with the wind. Here he takes on an accusatory tone. He accuses the wind for what he has done. He gestures towards the mess in his room and tells the wind 
that it is he who is responsible for it he shows the wind how he has thrown all the books down from the bookshelves with his force and torn pages of those books as well however the poet does not restrict his vision only to the inside of his house casting his gaze outside he also accuses the wind of having brought rainfall with him while approaching the poet's house so in these lines he is really angry with the wind for what it had done to his house to his books to his pages now lines 8 to 12 you are very clever at poking fun at weaklings frail cum crumbling houses crumbling doors crumbling rafters crumbling wood crumbling bodies crumbling lives crumbling hearts the wind god winnows and crushes them all so in these line the poet keeps speaking to the wind now it has sorry now his tone has once again undergone a change while it is still accusatory still he is accusing the wind for all the destruction but now his voice has become your tone has become sober in a subdued way he is talking to the wind the poet tells the wind that he makes mischief whenever he comes face to face with anyone who is too meek and mild to protest against his actions the wind can tear down the doors the rafters rafters are the supporting beam of the roof or entire wooden houses all together this is the wind overt action leaving people without a roof over their heads or walls to keep them sheltered from the harsh world outside see this is the thing all of us have noticed when there is a strong wind like a storm what they do they just destroy the houses of the weak people the the houses made made up of thatched roof they completely destroy those houses the people they come on road because they don't have the house to live in so what the wind does it destroys the weak people which who sorry the weak people who comes in its way however the wind also has a covert action to understand what the poet is talking about at this point you can think back to how many indian vernacular languages have a phrase about the wind blowing over someone's life and leaving a trail of disasters behind see many a times in hindi also we say meri zindagi mein to toofan ud gaya hai means completely my life has been destroyed theek hai the there is an ups and downs in my life many things have been destroyed i am completely shattered so many idioms are made like this what such an idiom implies is that the troubles we face in life come as sudden as the wind see a very good example of is the present scenario the corona virus see none of us were knowing that this virus is going to come in the world attack the world attack our country our people nobody was ready for it this no problems they don't intimate you before coming ki yes okay i am going to come if they would have intimate us before coming we all would have ready to face those uh, virus or to face those challenges so as the wind comes suddenly in the same way the problems in our lives the hardships in our life comes suddenly and then it is the real test of ours we should be strong enough we should build ourselves emotionally and physically strong to face those hardships to face those challenges and also live in the same sudden way see hinting at this the poet says that the wind can tear down weak bodies and fragile hearts that means if you don't if you are not strong at heart if your heart is not strong to bear those challenges you will very quickly lose hope you will be shattered see many cases we see in the world people are not able to they do are not able to face the challenges what they do they simply commit suicides they end their life just because they are not ready to face the challenges they are not able to face those challenges to fight those challenges so what ultimately what they do they end up their life so this is what 
the wind do to the weak people and this is what the hardship does to the human beings so now here in this poem the poet is asking you to build yourself emotionally and physically strong that is difficulties in life can lead to a loss of hope as well as a loss of life whether such things will happen or not is all up to wind god says the poet lines 13 14 and 15 he won't do what you tell him so come let's build a strong homes let's join the doors firmly in these lines the poet stops speaking to the wind and starts speaking to his readers he tells his readers that the wind does not listen to anybody see if you go and request the wind please don't come please don't uh, uh, destroy my house the wind will not listen to you so what you can do that the wind does not listen to anybody and that his actions are governed by him alone therefore we cannot escape the ill effects of the wind by appealing to the wind like he has been doing instead we should build our homes on a strong foundation and ensure that our doors cannot be easily penetrated in order to save ourselves from the wind so in the same way the hardships in life the problems in life they will not stop coming in your life so what you have to do you have to build yourself physically and emotionally very very strong line 16 17 and 18 practice to form the body make the heart steadfast do this and the wind will be friends with us in these lines the poet outlines some other ways in which his readers can save themselves from the wind he says that we must make ourselves strong both physically and mentally we must train our bodies and our hearts to combat against and resist the ill effects of the wind if we are able to do this then the poet thinks that we will no longer consider the wind an enemy instead the wind will invite us to become his friend and we will be able to fearlessly accept his invitation lines 19 to 23 the wind blows out weak fires he makes the strong fires roar and flourish his friendship is good we praise him every day the poet has kept the wind on a pedestal he is comparing the wind to god he says that wind is god and we praise wind every day he adds that everything that is weak gets finished off in the face of the strong wind and all the things that are strong flourish and grow to become stronger he is giving us a very important message that we should not feel bad that we are facing so many challenges and adversities in life though those hardships or those challenges are part and parcel of life so we should never complain or feel bad about it many times i heard people saying why me why this has happened to me only it's not that in some or the other fa- other form it happens to everyone so we should not cry or we should not feel bad about the challenges and adversities which we are facing we should make ourselves physically and mentally strong to face these challenges and once we are strong enough we will overcome the challenges we will become friends with them and then we will be happy that we had these challenges in our life because they help us become stronger and better so if you have this thing in your mind that challenges makes you stronger you will never lose hope you will be never fearful of the challenges with this we come i come to the end of the explanation of the poem now let's see the literally devices you now let's see the literary devices used in this poem first of all i would like to tell you that there is no rhyme scheme in this poem because it is a this poem is a free verse there is no rhyme scheme now let's see the literary devices or the poetic devices first one is anaphora when a word is repeated at the start of two or more consecutive lines it is the device of anaphora so line 
number two, three, four, it begins with don't, don't break the shutters, don't scatter the papers, don't throw down the books. In line number six, seven, eight, you tore the pages of the books, you brought rain. Then comes the personification. When we treat non-living things as a human being, it is known as personification. Here the poet has uh, referred to wind as you, that means he is treating the wind as a human being. Then next is repetition. Then repetition of the same word to lay emphasis. The word crumbling has been used many times just to lay emphasis that the wind crushes everything that is weak. Crushing lives, crushing hearts, cr uh, sorry, crumbling hearts, crumbling lives, crumbling doors, etc. Then alliteration. The repetition of a constant sound in close connection like wind winnows, won't want. Then symbolism. Symbolism means that the thing refers to some or other thing. Wind is a symbol. It refers to the challenges in life, adversities in life, hardships in life. Then last is metaphor. A device which compares two things, two qualities we can say which are not like, they are unlike. So in line number 12, the wind god winnows. Here the word winnows is a metaphor. It is used for separating the weak from the strong as in winnowing we just uh, separate the wheat from the husk in the same way it uh, separates the weak from the strong with this we come to the end of the poem uh, if any doubt you can ask me on my whatsapp number rest have a good day bye bye